Thank you so much for tuning in to She's All Over the Place with Kiriaki. That's me. Welcome to She's All Over the Place. Today, we have Julie Cohen, who is an Academy Award-nominated, Emmy-winning director and producer of RBG, along with Betsy West. Julie, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Great, great. Congratulations on Tribeca. How exciting. Yes, it was uh, quite an amazing experience to premiere everybody um, at Tribeca. Wonderful. So I was looking into everybody and I was wondering, you know, it's an interesting topic intersex that a lot of people aren't educated on. So as a filmmaker, why was it important for you to share and tell this story in 2023? Well, you know, I think this is the story of intersex people's fight for their own bodily autonomy and their human rights is a huge and undercovered story. There's a significant population of people around the world who are intersex, born uh, biologically, either through their anatomy, their chromosomes, or some combination in a way that they do not fit into the male and and female boxes as ordinarily defined. Um, They've been not treated very well by the medical establishment over the years, often subjected to unnecessary surgeries. They've been, they haven't gotten psychological care. They either have been sort of had information about their own medical conditions hidden, or they've been told they should keep quiet about it and keep it a big secret. It's all a recipe for taking a variation that somebody can be born with or or develop and then creating, you know, a huge amount of problems and trauma around something that should be less traumatic than it is. Yeah, because sometimes it's obvious and then sometimes it's known facts that people don't find out till later on in life. So it can really take a psychological toll feeling one way and you know, being one way and then assuming, appearing one way and and feeling inside another. And like you said, you know, the the trauma and people being silenced and, you know, there are a lot of situations that are happening in society. So when did you find out about intersex? It's new for me. So I'm I'm grateful to share it with my audience and, and learn more about intersex. And but yeah, when did you first know about it and start um, researching this journey? Yeah, so I've had some interest just uh, over many years as a journalist and then a filmmaker, I've been interested in trans issues. And so I had been become aware of the separate issue of intersex people uh, some time ago, but I didn't really learn about the blossoming kind of new intersex rights movement until pretty recently when I was doing some research for this project that kind of stemmed from an archival story and led me into looking into what's going on right now with the with the fight for intersex rights um and kind of like inspired by the trans rights movement intersex people have started to kind of cast aside the secrecy that they were told to hold about their own bodies and decided like no i'm gonna come out loud and proud as an intersex person as a way to advocate not only for my own rights, but also for the human rights of, you know, the babies and children that come after me that may be born intersex. Yes, we do have a lot of younger people who tune into the show. So I think it's going to be great for them to see your documentary and to learn more. In addition to seeing the documentary, what are some steps they could do or maybe a place they could go to to get involved in more of the community of intersex and to learn more? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Googling that one can do. There's an organization called Interact that is really a great clearinghouse for the latest in the intersex rights kind of policy movement. Also, the people who are featured in our film, young, amazing, dynamic uh, activists named Sean Seifawal, Alicia Roth Weigel, and River Gallo, like all of them have very active social media presences where people could follow along and, and see what they're up to. I mean, just taking the trouble to learn what intersex means. I think one thing I heard again and again from the activists is how tired they are of having to explain everything about their, you know, their lives and their own bodies as a way to educate people. And they're like, we're kind of tired of giving the intersex 101 lecture. So we wish that people would get it from the film and then like just do their own research to look into this, you know, to look into human variations 
that exist. I mean, you know, they've been kind of erased out of a lot of uh, a lot of conversations about about gender. And now that we as a society are really starting to look at gender in a new way, like it just seems like the time is ripe to make sure that everyone understands, um, you know, who an intersex person is, what it means, and that it's not something to be like horrified by or scared of, like feeling personally like, oh, this, you know, being painted as a freak or a monster was a pretty common experience for intersex people. And that's just a shame. Like, we just need to talk more sensitively about the diversity of human experience, which anyone who's been a human knows that, like, we all vary a fair amount. So... Yeah. I mean, what you just said, shame. I mean, we all know what that feels like. I remember when I was 14 and I felt shame, it was something completely different, but um, you know, we all have human emotions. We all have, you know, we all know what blaming and shaming is and right. how awkward and, and, particularly, and particularly about our bodies, like shame about oh, our yeah. bodies, shame about, you know, the intersex people were like, you know, there's all always these conversations about sex traits. Like we all have sex traits and we all have some, you know, compare, contrast feelings that bring shame and trouble and are, you know, <laughs> not the most mentally healthy way to deal with, you know, such subjects. So like, I think a little, a little openness can go a long way. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot lately that they're going to be uh, teaching uh, certain sex education in schools now. So I'm not sure if you know or not about intersex, if they're teaching that in schools, because do you know about that? At or no? this point, there's been very little of that, even in medical schools. I, you know, have met with oh. a bunch of medical students who are starting to advocate for intersex rights who say that it gets it gets mentioned in like, you know, there's like a half a day where all of a sudden people are talking about, okay, you know, who are talking about LGBT issues and intersex issues as goes by so fast that like, you know, uh, you know, and that's starting to change largely because young people are advocating for understanding things in, in a different way, spurred mm -hmm. on by their trans and non-binary, you know, friends and colleagues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. And then I'm wondering, how did the three participants find you or how did you find them for the documentary? Yes. Well, you know, that's the, the magic of social media is uh, I was able to, when I was sort of in the midst of searching for the on-camera faces for this film, I this was 2020 and I started doing a lot of Googling. At the time, um, Alicia Rothweigel was getting like tons of online attention. She's out there fighting for her rights and she's in Texas in some ways kind of like the heart of repressive anti LGBTQ plus uh, activism. So I was immediately intrigued by that. We had a great Zoom conversation. She introduced me to her friend Saifa Wall. We had a great conversation, started filming with them and um, River Gallo showed up um, at one of their early actions and that's where i got to know them river uses they them uh pronouns and you know they were all so so amazing like leaving aside like their intersex activism they're they're just great interesting fascinating people and you know telling fascinating people stories is kind of what i do for for a living so um it, i felt extremely grateful to have such such good representation of this community beautiful thank you so much for sharing and switching gears a little as a as a filmmaker and then the process that you just shared you have a vision and then you start shooting and then what are some next steps so you get into tribeca which i love i, I love tribeca so much as a filmmaker a lot of um entertainers uh entrepreneurs listen to the show and tune in and our artists so um any tools in 2023 advice that you could gift them to taking action and maybe steps that, so they could be successful like you? Um, you know, uh, you said your listeners are, are young. I am not. Um, so having, you know, sticking to something for a long time is part of this, is the way you get good at it. I have made a, I was a television news producer for men and writer for many years before I started making documentaries. I've been making documentaries for 15 years and uh, trying to get better and better at one's craft is obviously essential and also just forming good human relationships. Almost every project I've had in my career has stemmed from previous projects and relationships I've had 
to people who are either helping me find a story or are helping me, frankly, you know, get the funding to, to tell the story and like trying never to burn a bridge anywhere is is good. I left my job um, at NBC News in 2007 wanting to make documentaries, but I kept very strong relationships with my colleagues there and NBC News Studios was the entity that helped bring this story to fruition and their colleagues at Focus Features who are part of the same corporate family came in to be the production and you know the studio that's distributing this and um that wouldn't have happened like never mind sort of me developing skills and hard work and blah 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 you got to do all that but like having relationships with people that can stand the test of time and not not giving up this is not the first you know like i've pitched a lot of projects that don't happen <laughs> i pitched a lot of projects that do happen <laughs> like there's a yeah. there's a fair amount of uh, I, don't, I hesitate to say obsessiveness, but I would say just like ob obsessive and relentless pursuit of a goal, um, which is certainly the people that have made it in the documentary film world, from what I've observed, most of us are, I'm not saying we're not talented, but it's not like we're the most talented. We're the ones who have been the relentless -est. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. who have just kept, kept going, who have not let failures you know, set us back, you have a failure, then you pick up and go forward the next day. Yeah, what I'm also feeling and hearing is courage and bravery that you and your colleagues have such bravery to be shut down and just to keep marching and showing up and to go forward. Yeah, so. you know, it's not even bravery. It's like shutting out. And it's like, ignore. like if someone's like the rejection, you're like, nah, 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 I didn't hear that. <laughs> um, you know, just trying to sort of power through and have people around you who from whom you're getting your support because you're not going to really get support and love you want in the workplace. You get like get your support and love from your people and then mm -hmm. use that to bolster you forward in your work. Beautiful. Well said, well said. Um, and, you know, honing it in here, just wondering, uh, what did you shoot on? Oh, well, this was filmed. This is a little old school. Like your tech heads aren't maybe going to love us for this. We shot this mostly on Sony FS7. And um, my the reasoning, um, I will tell you, I do everything and we, we edit it on Premiere, on um, uh, Premiere Pro. And I make all those decisions. I believe in people over equipment. So I choose the cinematographers I want to work with and the editors I want to work with. And then I let them use what equipment that they prefer to work with. So as a result, I've worked with all kinds, I've had different, all different kinds of cameras because I chose a cinematographer for this who I, Kate Fallon and uh, Leia Anova, who I thought were going to be comfortable shooting this in a very naturalistic way, which is what I wanted to do and with a minimum of artificial light. And then once I had the people who were going to be the cinematographers, I said like, what, what camera would you prefer to work with? That's what we'll work with. Wonderful. Yeah, I love that. A collective vibe and team. This cinematographer and editor, have you worked with them before? Or was this your first time collaborating with them? No, this was my first collaboration with the cinematographers and with the editor. Very neat. That's great. Wonderful. Um, any last words? Or is a wisdom or anything you would like to share with the person tuning in? You know, I think filmmaking has a lot of technical stuff to it, but I feel like it's mostly about emotion. I really try to bring a lot of love to the projects. Like I try to, to I don't, this may not be necessary for every documentary, but I like documentaries that like where the heart and love really lead. I try to focus on people who I find extremely lovable and then bring out that, bring out the love towards them on screen. I hope that's what I've done with everybody. Beautiful, beautiful. And it's going to be in theaters June 30th. Oh my gosh, congratulations. How exciting. Thank you so much. I hope Yay. everyone goes to watch it. It's a really fun film. Serious subject matter, but a lot of fun. I will be spreading the good word. I will, I'm the ripple effect. I'm here for you. Congratulations. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, one, one quick question. How many um, shoot days did you have for the film? Yeah, I believe we had I want to say like 26 uh, shoot days. That, Neat. Is that, <laughs> is that what you're expecting? I don't know. That happens to be the number. Sometimes you have fewer. Oh, yeah. I believe no. we visited for and actually had 26 shoot days. Wonderful. Congratulations. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much for tuning into She's All Over the Place. Julie Cohen, thank you so much. Take good care. Thank you. You too. Thanks. 
Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Kiriaki, over and out. <laughs>